Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another Sims 4 mod video. So in my last mod review video, I did cover a little bit about MC Command Center and it was requested down in the comments that I do a little bit more of an in-depth review of that mod specifically. So that's what I'm gonna be doing in this video. So we are here with my new favorite family. This is the Rivera family. We've got Javi here. He is working on some writing practice because his last article did not do very well in the last episode and that's pretty much what they told him to do so he is in the office and we also have scout hanging out here in the office near an open flame um, she <laughs> is uh, doing some artwork and we've got Graham hanging out in here as well so what we're gonna do in this video I think the way that I'll break it out is in just a couple of different sections of what we do with MC Command Center. Keep in mind that I am going to be covering the things that I use MC Command Center for, so it's not going to be an all-encompassing review of the mod, but I will also link MC Command Center's website. Um, I think it's Debtor Pool's website down in the comments, and it is a great resource for each individual mod module and how it functions and, and the best way to get the best results out of it. So we we will start with all of the things that you can do in MC Command Center, specifically on the computer. Most of the things that you will be doing on the computer are mod settings that are more global, so they impact the entire save. So we will start there and I'll just kind of show you a little bit of what I do when I'm setting up a new save for gameplay and what parts of MC Command Center I find the most beneficial. Also, Javi looks really cute right here. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this so that we can um, get a better view of what we're going to be covering. So MC Command Center has several different modules. There's settings that you can do specifically on a sim. There's settings that you can do um, on the computer. And then I believe there's also settings that you can do to a smaller degree on mailboxes. There's probably a lot of other stuff too, but those are kind of the main things that I use in regular gameplay. So starting with computer settings, so you just come here, go to MC Command Center, and you'll see here there's quite a few different options. These are all, for the most part, global settings. So these are settings that are going to either impact every single save that you create or this specific save. I think for the most part, they will impact every single save that you create. So starting at the top with MCC settings, this one has quite a few options that I'm using in regular gameplay. So for starters, I do not use this autosave, but I definitely recommend it for folks who have a lot of crashing issues or other concerns with the stability of their game. It does save it regularly so that you don't have to worry about using progress. Like I said, this isn't one that I use, so I would highly recommend looking on Deadpool's website for the specifics on how it works, but it is an option that is also there. So I usually start in the gameplay settings. Um, in these gameplay settings, there's quite a few things that I use personally. Um, the fame difficulty adjustment. So this basically just makes it easier or more difficult for your sim to gain fame depending on the kind of household that i am um playing so for the Riveras, they're both celebrities i wouldn't want it to be more difficult for them to gain fame but if i'm playing a family that i'd want to stay out of the spotlight or maybe i want to make it more difficult because i'm specifically focused on that sim becoming famous this will be an option here and what i really like about mc command center is that when you come into these individual modules they do provide you with some information on how to make it work for you so what settings you would need to input in order to get the optimal result that you're looking for so it definitely tells you here that negative will slow the progress positive is faster and then it gives you kind of every uh, some more information i was reading some more information on what that looks like and how that works so fame difficulty adjustment is something that i use um i think i covered in the last um 
mod review that I use game time speed so this one is really important for me I use this in every save sometimes I change it depending on the family that I'm playing with so for example for the Rivera's my game time speed is 40 because I need it to be a little bit slower for them because there's so many people in the house and so much stuff to try and get through during the day and as we know some of the tasks can take forever to get through so just trying to take care of your child in the morning can take three hours so I like to try and slow it down to make sure that we have a fully fleshed out day um, so it does tell you here how this works the number of real-time milliseconds for every sim second the default is 25 and less than that makes the days go faster and greater makes the days go slower so the maximum value is 100 I don't want to know how slow that is but I have mine 15 up so I have it at 40 currently for the Rivera household um, and one of the comments in the last video someone did mention that it can't have negative impacts to your calendar and that's true um, usually for me though I have one save that I use and I just kind of keep recycling that same save whenever I start new gameplay so all of that stuff has already been done for me my suggestion would be that after you make the changes to the game speed and whatever else you're going to be changing it's going to require a restart anyway um, when you come back into the game that's when you go in and make your adjustments to your calendar so that way you don't have to do it a second time um, I come in here I change the game time speed and then when I restart the game I come in I open the calendar I add all of my holidays I move holidays around to wherever I would want them to be and I find that that works for me and it doesn't um, mess up after that so if anyone has any other issues with that in the comments or any other solutions for how to make that work easier definitely let us know but I have found that that works for me so that's game time speed and the next up is going to be maximum household size so I may end up having to do this for the Rivera family because I think with Graham and Maggie we're at one two three four five six seven so we only have space for one more child so maximum household size allows you to increase the threshold from the typical eight which is the EA standard and you can go all the way up to 104 I probably wouldn't recommend that <laughs> because I feel like that would be an absolute performance killer but I think increasing to like 9 or 10 will probably be fine um, the only issue that I would say is if you care at all about how your UI looks down here um, it's going to be a little bit wonky with the more extra slots that you add in but it does give you additional options if you are playing um, a 100 baby challenge and you want to have pets or something else in order to just make it a little bit better um, you have that option there so like I said I might end up doing that because Javi does want a child and they only have one space remaining and I kind of do like the idea of trying for twins with this family um, just because it's already been challenging why not make it a little more challenging so that's the maximum household size um, and then backing out motive decay so motive decay is actually a really good one it gives you the ability to change how quickly or how slowly the motives decay in your game you can do this um, just for certain um, sims so you can do it for babies only cats dogs it does have horse options and then I think everything above baby is just here in the sim option so I have mine um, decaying a little bit faster than the game just because I think when you slow down the game speed um, it's no one ever needs anything so I have it at 125 I may actually end up putting it at 150 just so that um, they start to have motives decay a little bit faster but it also has options in here for fame I do not like fame to decay in my game I don't think that that's very realistic especially the way that the Sims does it because it can be one day and you're getting a notification that um, their fame is decaying so I think you will still get that modification that notification from time to time but they're um, their fame won't actually decay so I have it set to zero you can see here it says um, 100 is normal zero equals none 200 is double so I have mine set to zero so that it won't decay at all and I use that pretty much in every save regardless of whether my sims are famous or not um, it also has vampire mode of decay I don't use this one because I don't play with occults but if you do it's there 
All right, so moving on from Motive Decay, here's another one that I use every single time. So Pause on Zone allows you to do something that I do a lot. I load up the game, I load up a household, and then I walk away. I walk away to grab a snack, get a water, do something around the house, whatever, until the game loads. This ensures that your game always loads paused. So when you come into your family's household or your family travels from one lot to another, when they get to that lot, it will be paused. So you don't have to worry about them getting there and then immediately they start taking off and doing things that you don't want them to do, especially if you're not going to be right there watching them. So I don't even remember what it's like to not have this enabled. I've been using it for so long, but this is a game changer. If you are like me and you do a lot of multitasking when you're playing The Sims, that like two to three minutes between uh, lots is time that I could be using to do something else. So that's what I do. And then I come back to it and it's ready for me whenever I get here. Okay. So, Sims are immortal, I assume, just means that there's no aging, your Sims never die. I don't have that able enabled. Um, I don't think that's very realistic, but it is an option that's here. So, skill settings. This gives you the option to make skills more difficult. So, depending on the type of gameplay that you are doing, sometimes, and we all know this, your Sims can gain skills ridiculously fast. This gives you the option to slow that down a little bit, make it more challenging for them to gain skills. I don't know if... It feels like it does give you the option to do like individual skills. Yeah, so you can just make it, let's say you have an acting sim, you can just make it that much more difficult for that acting sim to be able to get all the way to level 10. We know how quickly that moves. So that gives you the option to um, slow some of that stuff down. So skill settings is definitely a useful option within MC Command Center. Just keep in mind that it applies to all of your sims. I think it does have an option here, at least maybe I saw an option here, to exclude certain sims. Did I see that? Bypass skill list, skill difficulty adjustment. No, and you can't exclude any sims. You can only change it per individual skill, so keep that in mind. If you have one sim that you want to be a great cook, another sim that you want to struggle with it, this probably isn't going to do it for you. Okay. Um, teleport sim overlap and use random aging are both things that I don't use. So I think that's everything that I use within the main gameplay settings feature. So next up, we will be going into money settings. This one isn't going to take anywhere near as long. So I think a lot of these things are based on how you like to play and what your main priorities are. So if you are a player who doesn't care about, you know, some of the smaller, more mundane household things, you're probably not going to care that much about paying bills. Auto pay bills is going to work really well for you. Basically what happens is as soon as the bills are generated, they're put in your mailbox, they are automatically paid as long as you have the money so for me I enjoy the ability <laughs> or the need to go into the phone and pay the bills or sit down at the computer pay the bills or go to um, the mailbox and pay the bills I don't know just as a family game pay player game play player that works better for me but if you're not into that it will automatically pay those bills for you it also has another feature that I'm actually using right now in most of my saves, which is to change the bills percent. So most of my Sims live in really nice homes by design, um, but I do believe that the way that the Sims calculates the bills is absurd. So there is no way that every Monday I should have like $40,000 <laughs> in bills just to maintain my household. So I don't want it to be cheaty. So I don't have it set to like no bills or really low bills but I have reduced it a little bit so I've reduced the bills by 25 I'm going to assume that that's 25 percent um, of what they would normally be just to make it a little bit more realistic for me depending on the type of gameplay that you have you can play around with this as is you could absolutely make it higher I believe which um, could be more challenging so just depending on the type of gameplay that you're looking for this is something that I personally use a lot it helps to make it a little bit more realistic for me all right, so that is change bills percent. So some of these other things I haven't used, but I would really like to at some point. Child support percent. 
Um, there's an option down here for paying child support in the event that a child is not living with both parents. This option here changes what that percentage looks like. So that's an option as well as inheritance type. So in the event that your sim moves away from the household and the parents age and eventually pass away, um, how does that work? It gives you the option to determine how inheritance works in your game. And then this other option here, um, has additional options for whether or not the spouse should be the first one to receive an inheritance. So I haven't played around with those at all, but I do kind of want to. So I think that's something that's in um, on my list of things to do for The Sims, just to play around with it and see how that works. Um, okay, so that's money settings. So moving into notification console and menu settings. This one has um, just a couple of options that I use. So the notification settings, this changes the types of notifications that you'll receive through MC Command Center. So as people become pregnant, I think at midnight, the game automatically or the mod automatically makes certain sims pregnant. Um, you can determine whether or not you get notifications for that. Um, also moves, show empty house notifications. So sims moving into homes. Um, moving from one home to another. Um, all of those options are here so you can determine what parts of what the mod is doing to make the game more lively as you're playing, um, you get to see. So I think the only thing that I see regularly is the pregnancy notification. So show me if a sim has gotten pregnant. And like I said, I think those come in at midnight in game. So you can determine whether or not you care about any of the Sims around town who are with child. All right, so that's notification settings. Phone text, this one is really good. So the setting will um, set what text messages you will receive when your phone is silenced. Have it set to none. Um, for whatever reason, even when you've got the phone turned off, getting a text message about a festival is wild to me. Like I just... I just said I didn't want anything, so it'll be like random invites and stuff that'll still pop through. Um, I have mine set to no texts. So if the phone is silenced, which to be fair, I don't do very often, but if the phone is silenced, no text messages will come through. All right, do I do anything in show menu settings? I don't think I do. I leave this pretty much alone. All right, so that is notification console and menu settings. So next we are going to be moving into console and command settings. Wait, which that's still in here, is it not? Yes, okay, console command settings. So we're still in um, the console, the other one, whatever we were in before, what's it called? Notification console and menu settings, we're still in here. So console command settings, this is like your standard cheat stuff. So build by settings, do you wanna have by debug enabled automatically? What about free build, ignore unlocks? Like all of these options here, move objects, etc. You can make sure that every single time you load up your game, all these are automatically done for you. You don't have to worry about um, going in and typing each one of these in individually. I don't really mess around with that one too much because I don't um, do a lot of building and I have better build by, which automatically turns on, I think, some of those things if you want it, but the option is there. Um, debug commands and cheats, I don't do anything with, but this one says when this is enabled, debug commands will be available along with the cheats when testing cheats are enabled. Um, that sounds complicated. I don't, I don't do that, but <laughs> enable full edit CAS is one that I use all the time. So when I am in CAS, I like to have the option of messing around with sliders, messing around with, um, the weight slider, the muscle slider, making changes to my Sims face if I feel so inclined. And this gives you the option to do that no matter how you enter in the CAS. You don't have to worry about having to do, what is it that long cheat that you enter into the cheat command thingy in order for you to get this done this will just show up for you like that every time so whenever you go into CAS if you click on the sim and go into CAS for the family or for the individual it will give you the option to fully edit them the next one is headline effects so this gives you the option to um, have the headline effects in your game turned off so as y'all know I enjoy having them on I like the plumb bob I like to see the status bar on my um, 
skills as I am gaining them. So I keep mine turned on, but if you are a player who prefers to have them turned off, or you think for aesthetic purposes, if you are um, recording videos, that it makes more sense to have them turned off, then the option to do that is here. And then hover effects um, turns off the white outline around the sim or objects when you hover over them. So, <coughs> excuse me. When you're clicking on a sim or before you click on the sim as soon as your mouse cursor hovers over that sim it kind of has this white highlighting outline i have that disabled in my game but this is an option to do that so it just gets rid of or i have it enabled in my game but it just gets rid of that option if it's something that you don't want to see all right, and then testing cheats down here. Do you want that to already be enabled every time you come into your game or do you not? That's basically what this one is. That's essentially what everything is in the console command settings. It's all basically cheat related things and headline related things. This is just easier for you to do it here and then have it work for you permanently. Um, this is the spot for you. So moving on from console settings, we are now done with notification console and menu settings. We are now going to go into relationship settings. So this one um, has quite a few options in it. Some I don't really mess around with. I've never done anything with the team parenting um, or auto relationship settings. I have change the friendship decay percentage so I know that friendship decay is a normal thing that happens in real life but I don't want it to happen in my sims game there's already so much other stuff to do the idea of having to contact friends every single day in order to avoid losing relationships with them is um, overwhelming so I have it set to zero which means that it will never decay on its own um, everything higher than the standard which is 100 will make it decay faster so if that's the challenge that you're looking for the option is there you also have options to slow it down below 100 I just have it set to zero because I would prefer that it not happen at all all right Next up is relationship calling. So along the same lines, one of the things that happens in The Sims is if you meet a person and you haven't interacted with them in a long enough time and maybe you don't have a friendship, but you were working on one or you just met them a couple of times and you had a really low relationship bar, you will go into your relationships looking for that sim and they will be gone because <laughs> the sim will just clean them right out of there or the game will just clean them right out of there. So they call that relationship calling and this bypasses that. So you'll never forget a sim that you met, even if you don't interact with them a lot after you meet them, they'll still be in your relationship panel. If you do not disable this, then the game will continue to do it as normal. There's also an option here for what MC Command Center does, um, which I'm assuming is a little bit different from the standard, but I've never played around with this one, so I can't say how that one works. All right, so moving on from relationship culling, there's two options down here specifically related to romance. So romance difficulty adjustment, I think we all know how easy it is for a sim to fall in love with another sim. We've seen quite a bit of that in Harper's Let's Play. Um, but this gives you the option to make that a little bit more difficult so as opposed to the way that the game standardly works where they can go on one date and the next thing you know they're in love. This gives you the option for that to move a little bit slower or faster if that's what you're looking for. It looks like it can go up to 200%. So you have the option to um, increase that. The other option related to romance is once you have made that romantic partner, how difficult or easy is it for your romantic relationship to decay over time? Similar to how I have my friendship set, I have this set to zero because I don't want that to happen. Um, especially for a sim like Harper, for example, she is in university. She may not have time to meet up with her paramours every day. So the idea of her having to continue to maintain those relationships on an absolute daily basis is not going to happen. So it just makes more sense to me for it to be set to zero. Um, if I want them to break up, I'll break them up. It doesn't have to happen through um, decaying over time. All right, so that's everything that is in the relationship settings that I use. Um, the last thing here is setting the age span. So you can do this individually for cats, dogs, and horses. And you also have all of the different categories of 
human sims so you can make changes for short normal or long lifespan i have mine set to normal lifespan but my normal lifespan settings are insane so the baby is seven days that's probably the more realistic one infant is set to 77 and then it kind of just goes up from there so i am never planning on having an infant for 77 days but that's just the option that i've chosen they're all kind of wonky like that my sims i usually age up on my own so I will allow them to age up when I'm ready for them to um, we never go by the actual birthdays in the game so that is um, how I've done it but you can set it to anything that you want you don't have to go with what the game originally has set up you can base it on seasons you can base it on um, your sims calendar so you've got tons of options here on how you can change it for every single one of the lifespan the life stages life stages yep mm -hmm. okay so I think that is everything in um, the MCC settings that I use. So moving down to the next module, which is MC CAS. So in MC CAS, it gives you quite a few options. The ones that I use are down here. You can set a default white walk style for all male or female sims. If you want all of your sims to have the sassy walk, then you've got that option. If you want all of your male sims to have, I think they call it the swagger walk, you've got that option as well or whatever other options you want to choose. Um, also for offspring, using parents' physical attributes I think is really important for realistic gameplay. You want those babies to look like their parents. Um, so that's an option that's in here as well as skin tones and skin details It just makes it a lot easier for your sims children to age up looking more like their parents It's not a hundred percent science for sure, especially if you use a lot of skin details like I do But it just works out a little bit better for your sims to come out looking at least kind of like their parents um, when they're born in game so that is Offspring, and those are really the only two things that I can think of offhand that I am doing in MC Kaz. There is an option to exclude traits, I guess, if there's certain traits that you don't want your Sims to ever have. Um, I've never played around with that one. I don't know that I can think of any traits that I wouldn't want um, a Sim to have just for variety's sake, but that option is there if it's something that you want to play around with. All right, so next up is MC Career. This makes quite a bit of changes to the way that the career system works in the game. So you can change the difficulty of careers if you want them to be easier or more difficult. That option is here. Um, I have mine set to default, so I'm not making it easier or harder. I'm going with what the game setup is. But here you can make changes to that. There's also an option to bypass your played households. So if you want to ensure that played households don't become a part of what gets pulled in by MC Command Center to become um, a part of a career, then you have the ability to enable or disable that um, within bypass played households. I've never played around with children quitting school, school homework progression, I think I leave that one alone, but it gives you the option to make that homework more or less difficult. Um, secret society decay percent. percent. I've never had a sim join the secret society, so I can't say um, how easy or difficult it is for your relationships with that secret society to decay, but this makes that, um, adjust that for you. Teens quit school. If enabled, teens will be able to quit school. I don't have that enabled. And I think it has an option up here for children as well. I don't know why you would want your children to quit school, but I guess depending on what type of gameplay you have going on, maybe that's a thing. Um, university difficulty adjustment. So this just makes it more or less difficult for, I'm assuming the grades, change university progression to be slower or faster. Um, yeah, never done anything with that. I don't plan to start now, that sounds a little overwhelming. And then homework progression. So this just makes it um, faster or slower for the homework to be done. All right, so I think that's everything that I do in MC Career. 
Next up is going to be MC Clubs, I believe. I don't think I do anything in MC Cleaner. Various aspects of Sims Lots neighborhoods. No, I don't. Okay, so MC Clubs bypass played households. So you know how you go to a lot and there's a club gathering and that club gathering is of whatever. Um, what do they have? Like the plant one, there's several different ones. And you show up and maybe one of your Sims family members is a part of that club all of a sudden. This will allow you to make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, otherwise the game will absolutely pull those people in and make them a part of whatever club they want them to be. Um, club member count, this one is super useful. So I don't have it set up to do anything now, but Harper is currently in a club, she's in a sorority. So if you want to have more members in that club than what is allowed, which is a default of eight, you can absolutely add 20, 30, up to 50 um, options for people to be in your Sims club. That may be something that we do for Harper Sorority and Jackson's Fraternity in the future, but for now, I just have that set to the default. All right, so Maximum Joinable Clubs is pretty self-explanatory. It allows you to be a part of more clubs than what um, the game mechanic automatically allows. And then I don't do anything with these bottom two open members. Specify how many open positions will be left in clubs when club monitoring is enabled. Okay, so it looks like this option here just adds in people to your club without you having to invite them or add them in yourself. And then this secondary option gives you the option to keep some of those spaces open so that your club doesn't get full. All right, so that is MC Clubs. MC Dresser, I probably use regularly, not here, but like on the actual Sims. Um, facial hair settings, makeup settings. Makeup settings is a really good one because it gives you the option to copy makeup and face paint across different outfits as opposed to um, having to manually do that yourself. Also, I think here it gives you the option to say what outfits require makeup. Like, do you need makeup when bathing? When do you need makeup? This one should probably be checked, but I don't feel like changing that right now, as well as these other two. So I don't know if these are the defaults or like how that works, but it determines for you which ensembles should automatically have makeup parts included. All right, so um, I think that's everything that I do in, in this one, in MC Dresser. All right, so MC Occult, this one I use quite a bit. It gives you the option to determine how many occult, um, are born in game. It doesn't give you the option to determine which ones are spawned. So that would have to be something separate that you have set up. But um, born in game, it gives you the option to do that. It also gives you the option to force all aliens to hide themselves, <laughs> which kind of seems messed up. But because I don't play with occults in any of my gameplay, all of these are pretty much set to the bare minimum in order to ensure that I have as few spawn in my game as possible or born in my game as possible. Um, so that is MC Occult. MC Population. All right, so this one is really really helpful for determining how your world is going to be shaped so moving settings this one determines who gets to move into the empty houses in your sims world i don't want any sims to move into <laughs> empty houses if i wanted them in a house i would put them in one so because i have a lot of sims usually that just hang out in my sim bin unless they're sims that are a part of my story or part of my whatever family i'm playing with their you know group of friends then they hang out in the sim bin. I do not want them to have homes. So this keeps them from moving into them. Um, moving single sims out of homes, I try and avoid having that be the case as well. Because sometimes you'll have a family of five and then you'll go to have your friend, your, your sim visit them and someone's just randomly moved out. You don't know where they moved. So this keeps them from being able to do that. Um, bypassing your played households. So moving your played households around without your permission, that gives you the option to do that. Um, maximum household pets. So of course we know that The Sims allows through story progression as well as through The Sims version of story progression for people to adopt pets. So I have personally seen, I've gone into um, the, the household menu and I've seen a Sim with like seven cats 
or something ridiculous like that. So this limits the number of pets that they can adopt um, through story progression. Um, and these are all things that I don't mess around with, but I guess bypass dorm residents. When doing move to retirement homes or single sim move outs, bypass dorm residents from the features. Okay, so that makes sense. All right, so that's moving settings and then populating settings okay so this determines when you are allowing the game to create sims to move into your world as you need sims for various jobs or whatever um, this determines the percentage of each that you have so what percentage of new sims are spawned are babies infants etc um, the percent in the game generated yes exactly so when the game generates a sim for you what percentage of them will be each one of these life states um, what percentage would be male or female as well as what your butler's ages are so I like the idea of having adult or elder sims I think the game automatically just has elders all the time I'm not sure I don't remember I've always had both of these set up no it says default is set to adult elder okay so you could also have a young adult butler if you wanted to um so that feature gives you that option so down here this is a crucial one so import tray settings this gives you the option to use your gallery tray in order to bring sims into your world as opposed to bringing sims in or allowing the game to create the sims or generate the sims for you so i do this 100 percent this basically means that my game does not generate any sims for me. I have a whole bunch of sims just out in my gallery that are set up to be pulled in whenever the game needs a new sim for something. So if it needs a sim for a job, if it needs a sim for a university, for a high school, whatever it needs, it's going to get those sims from the sims that are already in the world. Or if it needs more sims, it's going to pull them from my gallery as opposed to generating them on their own. I do this because they create really unfortunate looking sims with really unfortunate looking outfits and it's just so much easier and easier in my mind to download a bunch of eight sim households that are specifically created for this purpose and then have the sim or the game pull in those as needed so i'll show you a little bit about how that works it's set to 100 percent for me um import tray sim type any save sims but then you have the ability down here and um, this is the next one, import by tags. So I have it set to um, only include tags. And I believe the tag is MCC include. I'll show you in just a second what that looks like in the gallery in order to make sure that only certain households are used for this. So the reason why I do that, and everybody probably doesn't need to, but my Sims gallery is a hot mess. I have the same families saved like 15 times, especially some of my more popular families that I play with regularly. As I update them, I keep copies of them. I have millions of copies of some of these things. Um, so I don't want the same sim families to continue to be pulled in. Also, my sim families that I keep in my gallery, I wouldn't want to be a part of this because I'm already playing with them. So I don't need another hobby to randomly show up in my game someplace because MC commands are pulled it in. So I have it set to only include tags. Um, and when it pulls in, you can determine um, what gender options, which clothing, should they come in with their name, etc. So I'm going to close out of MC Command Center so I can show you what this looks like in the gallery. Alright, so I'm going to pull up my gallery and you will see what I mean when I say I have a million um, different versions of the exact same family in here so it is crucial for me to use those tags why is this taking so long maybe because this is the first time i've pulled it up in a while okay so here is my gallery i am going to go to include custom content then i'm going to go to households and as you can see i have a million version of the same million versions of like the rivera family here all right so let's go to size seven or eight because these are usually the sim dumps that I pull in. 
So I've got a bunch of Sim dumps down here from Sims on the Rope specifically. Um, they make a lot of these and I will leave their um, Tumblr in the description of this video as well. They do this a lot. So they have service sims specifically that you can pull in. They have all kinds of other sims that you can pull in. So what you'll want to do in order to make this work for you is let's just say you go to this family here or this um, dump of sims. You want this dump of sims to be a part of your ability for the game to pull in sims. So you would need to save them separately and you would want to include this um, hashtag down here, MCCC underscore include. This is what allows MC Command Center to know that this is a group of sims that you want them to pull from if they need to. So I just save a bunch of multi-family households or single sim households specifically for this purpose so that they can kind of be pulled in as the game needs. So that's what those are. Um, so that is probably the most crucial thing that I've learned about MC Command Center that has made my gameplay experience so much better. Now I don't have to worry about being someplace with my Sims and another Sim showing up in the background and it's got like 15 different outfits on at the same time for no reason or it's wearing some ridiculous hair or something that isn't set to non-random that I haven't gone through to change. This just makes it so much easier and you're also able to pull in which I find really helpful. Sims that already have careers, they already have have trait skills, they have, you know, lifestyles, they have all kinds of other things already happening. So as your sims interact with them, they're interacting with fully fleshed out characters who will be able to, you know, immediately be friends with your sims and you don't have to worry about trying to figure out later how to make them real people. So that is probably the most useful tool in MC Command Center. And if anyone needs a more detailed kind of walkthrough on what that looks like, definitely let me know. But I think that should pretty much cover how to make that work. Okay, so where were we? We were, is it, is it going to work? Okay, here we go. Um, we were in MC Population. I think that was everything no it wasn't okay so populating settings i think is where we were we got to the tray settings that was the last thing that we covered okay so next up is enabling or disabling bar nights so this is critical for me as a person who doesn't like to play unrealistically so alien bar night doesn't make sense if you don't want to randomly have bars where aliens or bears or ghosts are showing up so i have those disabled the only ones that i have enabled in my game are guys night ladies night and singles night so no knights night um no bear night no any of those other things just because for my gameplay that's what's most realistic um so if i send my sim to a bar they will not encounter a bear there that just makes it work out a little bit better for me and my needs but this is option that i definitely would recommend okay wait what happened did i close something by accident i guess i did all right so that was we're still in mc um, population. I think that's everything that I do in here. Nope, it isn't. All right, so I do this as well. Bypass sim culling. This is in two different places. I have it turned off in both places to make sure that they're not culling my sims relationships. Um, bypassing the clown walk by. I have never seen the clown walk by, but when I saw this setting here, I went ahead and enabled it just to make sure that that didn't happen to me. Um, there's several other options here as well, Immortal Sims, Maximizing Sims on Zone. This one is critical. So EA will not allow more than 20 Sims to be in any location at a time. I have mine set to 40. I still want it to be um, manageable because I do record a lot. So that already takes up a lot of computer resources. I wouldn't want it to be like 100 Sims randomly showing up on a lot. I don't think that I could emotionally handle that. but. <laughs> I have mine set to 40 just because I think that that would make the lot feel a little bit more lively if you're going to a bar or the gym or whatever more sims are able to show up so it just feels like you're at a real place and not you know people just showing up as backdrop for whatever you're doing 
So that's Maximum Sims a lot. I think that is the last thing that I do in MC Population. All right, so as you can see, like setting up a save, like for the first time, is a massive undertaking. <laughs> So that's why I just continue to use the same saves over and over again because they've got these settings set up for me. All right, so MC Pregnancy, um, what do I use in here? Offspring, it's another um, way to make sure that your Sims pick up some of their parents' traits, <coughs> excuse me, when they are born. So it gives them the option to inherit some of their parents' traits. Um, it gives them the option to change the type of gender so if you only want female sims to be born you have that option if you only want male sims to be born you've got that option that seems a little weird but if that's what you're into you can certainly do that um sinking child surname i think this is more of a if it's off lot so if someone else is having a child in the game making sure that that child has a parent's last name um and renaming non-active offspring i think it gives you the option Determine whether to rename a baby born to an NPC or place him after pregnancy completes. Oh, should I have this on? Do I have this on? Include active sims only. I should probably have that on. I'm not going to turn it on right now though, but sometimes they do give some really funky names to some of these children. Okay. So, other marriage, other pregnancy, partner sim selection, pet pregnancy settings. Um, pregnant sim selection and then spouse sim selection are all things I don't think that I've ever messed around with. But there are options here if for whatever reason you would like to. I did see a same sex setting in here. So if you want to make sure that that's set up, I think, yeah, same sex percentage. The percentage chance that a marriage will be allowed between two sims of the same gender. This is dependent on the other marriage settings allowing the same sex marriage to happen as well. So I think the default is 50, meaning um, half of the marriages that are created by the game will be between same-sex couples and then half will be between um opposite sex couples and then you can change this to zero or 100. Um, mine is just set to 50 and then i think that's the only thing in here that i would call out um i don't think i do anything else in mc pregnancy from here but there are adoption settings and some other things that you might want to play around with if you are into that um, MC Tuner, the only thing that I do in here is enable the autonomy scan, and we'll talk a little bit about, um, that as well on the sim menu, but I don't think you can actually just maximize this, how many different autonomous things you can have, and we'll cover that in a second. So I will show you more about that once we get to the sim menu itself. Okay, so moving on. Next up is MC Woohoo. So this one is actually quite big. It gives you a lot of different options. Some of them are disturbing. Um, allow family woohoo. I can't imagine why you need to do that. Allow teen woohoo. I guess if you are trying to um, do like a, a gameplay situation with a teen parent, that option is there for you. Same sex try for baby is self explanatory. Allow polygamy, I'm assuming, will allow your sim to be married. Okay, so self explanatory. Sims can have multiple engagements and spouses. Um, no strings, woohoo. I think I have that disabled. It says when enabled, woohoo and try for baby can be attempted without romantic relationship existing or being created between sims. The only thing that would scare me about that is the try for baby. Like, why would you do that? <laughs> I mean, I guess if you're playing like a 100 baby challenge or something like that, but mm, that sounds mm, scary. Okay, um, that was no strings woohoo, right? No strings ignore gender preference. When enabled, Sims may have no strings woohoo regardless of personal gender preferences. Notice that this includes autonomous woohoo if that is enabled, okay? And then allow try for baby. When enable try for baby interaction, show on menus as normal. So if you don't want your sims to be able to try for baby, you have the option to remove it there. Elder try for baby. Allow try for baby interactions with elder sims. Okay, so interesting science there. I'm assuming, never mind. I don't know what they're assuming. I don't want to assume what they're assuming. But interesting science there. Okay, so woohoo pregnancy, risky woohoo percent. This is 
always risky because like I have mine set to zero but for some reason they will randomly get pregnant even though they weren't trying for baby I don't know if that's another setting maybe that's a wicked limbs thing that I have set up but it is um, set to zero for all of mine but yeah so if you want a little bit more realism in your sims gameplay where there's not 100% fail safe and ability to get pregnant then you can come in here to risky woohoo and play around with that um, use fertility in risky try for baby percent um, the percentage chance that the target will become pregnant when sims try for baby so it is defaulted to 80 I haven't changed that but it looks like it's more likely than not if you try for baby that you will succeed all right um, same-sex pregnancy sim when two same-sex sims get pregnant through woohoo specify which sim gets pregnant okay so in this case it will be the one who is asked it sounds like to have woohoo not the one who initiates that would get pregnant and then opposite sex pregnancy sim when two opposite sex sims get pregnant through woohoo specify which sims get pregnant so it can be female sim or the male sim it can also be similar to what they have with the same sex where the person who initiates can get pregnant or the person who is the target of the initiation can get pregnant so i'm pretty sure um, woohoo reactions what's this one bed sharing so this allows you to share a romantic or a sim with a bed that you're not in a romantic relationship with um, and no jealousy allows you to woohoo without triggering jealousy from maybe your partner sim I would imagine that you would need to have that if you were going to do the polygamy thing um, that we saw in one of the other settings use privacy woohoo for woohoo when enabled sims will shoot other sims from the room when they woohoo and then sleepy woohoo <laughs> when an npc is involved in bed woohoo between 10 p.m and 4 a.m they will go to sleep in the bed okay so no getting up and leaving right after which i appreciate Okay, so sim nudity, nudity interactions, um, nude woohoo, nude hot tub woohoo, nude hot springs woohoo, nude sauna woohoo, spa, yoga, workout. What? Nude workout? Specify whether sims should undress when using exercise equipment. The sims must be valid based on nudity ages and nudity genders as well. Why would you be naked on the treadmill? That just seems really uncomfortable and the risk associated with that doesn't seem worth the reward but okay and the nude shower woohoo those all make sense the only one that's throwing me off is the exercise i don't know why you would do that stay nude after woohoo i think makes sense i have that enabled for me i don't know why you would like immediately put your clothes on that's kind of weird um and then nudity ages yeah so i i don't want to see teen nudity and i'm going to assume the default yeah so this is a default the default avoids elder nudity as well i am not discriminating against the elders i did not set it up that way okay so nudity genders um specify the genders valid for nudity okay and then there is nudity interactions we already covered that one so i think that's all of the nudity stuff um autonomous woohoo i have that enabled um autonomous try for baby i have that disabled because absolutely not autonomous rest time what is this one when autonomous woohoo is enabled this setting will control the minimum number of hours that will pass between autonomous woohoo for a sim okay and then extreme woohoo I have that disabled so when enabled sims will woohoo more often the autonomous rest time setting can be used to determine cooldown between woohoo interactions the setting requires autonomous woohoo or autonomous try for baby to be enabled okay so i have not done that but it seems like it could be fun for like a college situation like maybe in harper save that could work out um allow birth control birth control duration and all moods birth control what is this if the setting is enabled, the birth control interaction will always be available on active sims rather than only when flirty. Okay. All right. So I think that's everything that's in MC Woohoo, which would bring us to the end of the first half of our review, which is of the computer settings for MC Command Center. So I will leave um, Javi to his business here 
and I think we will use Kyle who is uncomfortable what is she doing she's just randomly outside where are you going ma'am where is she going she's going to sunbathe in her bathroom so I don't know what is going on with her children where is Dylan is Dylan still in bed so she's left Dylan in the crib and she has decided to go and sunbathe while her child is awake and for whatever reason Chase is still sleeping and it's 9 30 um but just back to Kyle okay so we're going to use Kyle to look at the other settings that are on a sim she looks amazing in this green this is definitely doing it for her Okay, so there you would just click on MC Command Center specifically on a sim. This gives you an entirely different little set of options. Some of them are contingent upon what you selected on the computer, but some of the others are just based on what um, the mod allows. So modify household and CAS. This one I use probably every time I'm playing the game. This gives me the option to um, go into the the CAS situation or go into <laughs> the CAS situation go into CAS with the family directly from clicking on the sim as opposed to having to go back out and manage everyone individually um it gives you the option to do the entire family right here so you can just go through and dress everyone change clothes do whatever it is that you're doing there um here sim commands does a few different things so one of them to start modifying CAS the difference between that one and modify household and CAS is that this gives you the option to modify just this sim so this I use a lot if I am going let's say I'm going on a date Harper's going on a date with Jackson and Jackson is wearing an outfit that I'm not feeling I can modify Jackson and Cass specifically there and then when I'm done modifying him I will come out and I will still be on Harper if you do the first one which is modify household in Cass when you come out of Jackson's uh, modifying Jackson you will be in his household because you will be modifying his entire family whoever that is as opposed to modifying him individually so that gives you this option so neither of my sims have traditional jobs but if your sim has a traditional job that has a uniform or an outfit set you also have the option to go into cas to change that outfit usually shows up right under modifying cas it's like modify career outfit or something like that i use that all the time um, if I have a sim that has an actual job that they have to go to, I want them to be wearing something different every day because I don't go to work wearing the same clothes every day. My sim shouldn't either. It is an undertaking, but it is definitely something that I do. Um, so that is an option that you won't see here, but you will see it if your sim has a career. Um, set age, I've never messed around with. Um, it basically just gives you the option to make... Um, your sim whatever you would want her to be you can also change the number of days in their current age so if i want harper to have a birthday or harper if i want kyle to have a birthday i can um change the number of days that she's got left before she has a birthday um, i can also make her an infant a toddler a child etc in here through the mod i have not done that um it sounds terrifying i don't recommend unless you are doing it for a specific reason um mc Kaz. so this gives you the ability to change some of the things for your specific sim and it's not all cast stuff so some of the stuff is stuff that's hidden um you can manage her traits you can also copy um certain attributes for her you can copy her skin tone you can copy um her body her physique um, her skin details you can also copy her traits so down here on the bottom and I've used this quite a bit is pace trace him so I'll give you a scenario where this will be useful for me so as I've shown you in my gallery I have a million copies of the same family saved so let's just say I am not in the family's household but I've decided to update a sim I did this recently with Jackson where Jackson got a makeover 
I didn't do that within Jackson save or within Harper save I did that in the main menu so once I was done with that I saved a copy of Jackson's new self and I would be able to come in here to paste the trace in go into his save where he had the potato face and paste the new version in it so it gives you the option to choose any sim that's in your gallery or your tray you can pair down by what you're looking for any save sim sims that you've saved only include tags and it will show you the sim that you changed you would just go in paste that sim onto your old sims face and their new version of themselves will appear without losing any of their relationships without using their skills or any progress that they've made in their careers etc they will be the exact same sim just with a completely different face i use this really often it is super useful um so yeah that's what paste trace sim is so I think um, moving along down in MC Cas, you can manage traits if you want to add or remove traits. You can do that here without having to go into Cas to do it. Um, you can select their favorite drink. So that's something that I use a lot. I think it's the drink that they automatically order. If you just have them go order a drink, I like to make sure that they have a favorite drink that I think fits their personalities. Um, favorite umbrella, so they can come in here, they can select an umbrella without you having to go to the, um, the thing the umbrella stand and select one they can just do it right from in here and it also pulls in all of the umbrellas that you have in the game so if you have a mod that has in a different different umbrellas like I do then those will be selectable as well um, I don't know why that changed this but it did um, so what were we looking at Okay, setting their voice, you can also set their walk style heel here. If you forgot to do that without having to go all the way back into CAS, you can set the walk style and also sunbathing options. So you can just, I guess it's like a cheat essentially. You can um, make your sim sunburnt, you can make them tanned, you can lock in that tanner burn. Um, it also has the option if your sim is tanned to get rid of the tan if you would prefer them to not have it. Um, so that's basically it in MC Cas. So next up is MC Cheats. We covered this one a little bit in the last um, video that I did, so I won't stay on this topic for too long, but it has lots of options. You can increase the funds from here. This is for the entire household. You can make it whatever you would like it to be. Um, you also have the ability to cheat individual sim info. So this is where you would cheat the sims career if they had one you can um, promote or demote you can do all of that stuff from within this cheat menu you can also change their skills so if you want to set certain skills to a level you have that option you can randomize their skills you can max all skills um, and then here are the expansion cheats so some of these I haven't touched at all like Batu. I've literally never been to Batu. Um, Ever at any point in the entirety of its existence so I've never been there but you can click cheat clubs you can decrease celebrity level you can increase celebrity level um, growing together cheats are what milestone related adding or removing milestones unlocking milestones um, I think the snowy escape ones are related to lifestyles you can add or remove lifestyles from here um, also, you have the university cheats. We covered this a little bit. You can cheat a degree. You can enroll in university. I don't know what you can do if they're already in university here, but um, those are options that you have for expansion cheats. And we've already covered skill cheats. So cheats and info, I think that's all of it. The cult cheats, I've never messed around with. Looks like that only covers aliens. Okay, so increasing points. It increases followers, but I don't know for which one of the many Sims different follower counts they're talking about because we know that they have at least like three or four different places that they can have followers. I don't know which one this is for. Maybe it's for all of them. If you have a restaurant, you can increase your restaurant points, retail store points, satisfaction points are for your Sims um, aspiration. So you can increase their satisfaction points in order for them to get stuff from the reward store. And then if your Sim is a vet, you can increase the points there as well. Um, making happy, I'm assuming just Sets all motives on the selected sim to their maximum values, okay? 
and then completing an aspirational goal, resetting aspirations, and then most commonly used is resetting the sim. So it just allows you to do that without having to type all of that stuff up over here. All right, so that is a quick review of MC Cheats. I don't think I've used MC Cleaner for anything. MC Dresser, the only thing that I really use this for is to change an outfit. So giving the previous example, Harper's on a date with Jackson, I don't like what he has on, but I have already selected other outfits for him. We can come in to change outfit. It will give me all of the outfits for the selected sim and I can choose whatever outfit I want them to wear at that time and they will automatically just change into that outfit. Um, I haven't played around with a lot of these other things, copy and paste, I'm assuming it would copy the outfit or the hair or the makeup or whatever from her sleepwear four to wherever I want it to go. Um, copy outfit, so I've copied it and I guess I can put it on a different outfit. That's actually really handy. Okay, so excluded items. I, I don't know what that is. I'm assuming I could exclude certain parts of what she has on right now so that she never wears that again. Um, and then outfit command. So you can clean the outfit if she's wearing some random thing that you don't want her to have on, meaning like um, an eyeball ring, for example, that's randomly spawned on her outfit. You can, I think in here, clean that off. Remove excluded items. So things that you've excluded for her to be able to wear, you can exclude it there. Um, delete outfit from category, um, save outfit. So outfit commands is another area that I don't really mess around with. Um, in MC Dresser, for me, it is mostly just changing that outfit. All right, so MC Pregnancy, you can start a pregnancy here. You can list all the children of a sim. Once you have a pregnancy started, which I will not do because we have too many kids, um, you can accelerate that pregnancy, you can pause the pregnancy, you can change the number of days for the pregnancy. So those are all things that I do. Um, I like my sims to be pregnant for longer because that's more realistic for me. So their individual trimesters go slower. You can also speed it up, you can make it so that they give birth immediately. You can also manipulate the number of children that they're having, so if you want them to have twins or triplets, you can change that within MC Pregnancy. You can also change the gender of the children, so if you want them to have a girl or a boy, one of each, whatever, you can change that within MC Pregnancy as well. I think I already mentioned that you can pause pregnancies. Um, and change the duration. So those are all the things that you can do in MC Pregnancy, most of which will only appear here if there is a pregnant sim. So one of the things that I use it for, say I see a pregnant sim out in the world and I have no idea who impregnated that sim, you can see by clicking on that sim and going to MC Pregnancy that they're having a baby with X sim, whoever that sim is. And you can also see how many other children that sim has. So we can see here that she has Dylan and Scout. And we're not, I'm assuming the game doesn't count Chase because technically Chase is her stepdaughter. So it's gotta be children that she has given birth to. Maybe if she adopted Chase, she would appear there. I'm not sure. But since it's pregnancy related, I'm going to assume it's just the number of pregnancies that she's had. All right, so that is MC Pregnancy. MC Tuner, turn off autonomous interactions. Okay, so this is one that I do use. So let me go back and explain what this is. So MC Tuner, turn off autonomous interactions to help refine what sims will do when you're not controlling them. So this is not a 100%, but it does work pretty well. Um, when you click on enable autonomy scan, essentially what will happen, I'm gonna click off of Kyle. Let's just go over here to the bar. You will see a new option here called Autonomy Scan. You pull that up and it's gonna tell you everything that Sims can do with this bar. And it will give you, deliver mail. Okay, it will give you options here that you can make no longer autonomous. So you can make it so that she cannot practice bar tricks. You can make it so that she cannot practice making drinks. You can make it so that she cannot make a drink at this bar autonomously. 
I would need to direct her to do that. Same with other items. So let's just say we've got our little hot tub over here. I can make it so that she doesn't nap or relax in that hot tub autonomously. I've already done that. You can make it so that they don't do certain upgrade options. Um, you can make it so that they don't autonomously get into it. So there's all kinds of things that you can do that will prevent your sim from doing certain actions that you don't want them to do when you are not actively controlling them. It's pretty much on every option or every, um, Thing that your sims can interact with without you telling them to so you can stop them from doing pretty much anything autonomously a couple of things that i have found that where it doesn't work completely um i cannot stop them from getting food out of this refrigerator <laughs> that is the only reason why autonomy is not on in this gameplay is because i can't stop them from doing it so even though i have options here um autonomy scan even though i have options here i have turned off autonomous cook i have turned off grab drink i have turned off have a quick meal or drink i have turned all of these things off but for whatever reason even though there are no other options in here that specifically relate to them grabbing food out of this refrigerator they can still go and grab random bread random yogurt or um what was the last thing i think at one point javi grabbed a bag of marshmallows they'll just randomly grab things out of the refrigerator even though they're not permitted to so it doesn't give me the ability to do that but for a lot of the other options it works really well another thing that doesn't have an autonomy enable scan or disable scan that i wish did is the crib i can't stop them from touching these children after <laughs> after they're in there so it doesn't give me the option to lock it or to like keep them from messing with the kids so that is one of the i guess negatives i don't know if i would say a negative because there's a lot of really positive things but um that is autonomy scan um that one i think is super critical like even here i think this would stop them from being able to challenge do i see that option no, I don't. So they can still challenge. Yeah, they can still challenge a sim to a basketball game. I don't know if that's a thing that the game has. Does the game have that where they can challenge? I thought they did. But anyway, so that is um, autonomy scan. Like I said, that one I use quite a bit. I find it to be super useful. Um, especially when you are controlling a big household and you don't want to have to control every single thing that they do all the time it gives you the option to have a lot more flexibility in giving your sims freedom without doing stuff that you know is going to irritate you like randomly going to take a nap in the hot tub instead of getting in the bed if you're tired so I removed a lot of those options using the autonomy scan. All right, so I'm looking at my notes to see if there's anything else that we didn't cover. Um, okay, so that was tuner. Don't do anything with these. All right, so relationships. So adding a relationship or adding a relationship with a sim unlocked. Adding a relationship is with anyone. Like any sim that's in the game, you can add a relationship with them. Adding a relationship with the sim on lot is basically just the people that are in your household or the people that are near your household. So these three sims are just randomly hanging out somewhere around um, our lot. So you can add a relationship and it gives you these different options. Usually these are like when you're setting up a new um, game and for some reason something isn't set up properly, a brother sister relationship isn't um, established properly or mother son, mother daughter, whatever the relationship is, isn't set up properly. You can make the changes there within relationships. You also have the ability to delete a relationship with a sim, clear all the relationships the sim has um everyone forget active so this is i guess what i would consider to be the spider-man no way home option or the spider-man whatever the last one is option where the sim is forgotten by literally everyone nobody knows who they are anymore um whatever spider-man that is that's what that option has to be and then to divorce Divorce Kyle Rivera and Javier Rivera, so they wouldn't even have to talk about it. She would basically just do it and leave. 
<laughs> so those are the options there. Um, it also, like I said, set relationships for Sim Online. It would give you the option, what? Sex, active, friendly, or romantic. I don't know what all that other stuff is, but it does give you the option. If you wanted to do it and you're not a person who uses UI cheats, or you don't have UI cheats, or UI cheats isn't working, um, you have the ability to change these measurements within MC relationships. So I think that is everything that we can do on a sim. Let's just take another moment to bask in the beauty that is Kyle here in her um, green bathrobe that she is using to randomly go outside and sunbathe while her children are in need of care. Um, unfortunate but that's what she's doing okay so the last place that i ever do anything with when it comes to mc command center is going to be the mailbox so let's go to the front of the house um to their super basic mailbox so for the mailbox there's a couple of features here so i don't use a lot of them but i do use some active household cheats um, you can fill the needs of the entire household. I don't think I've ever done that. Um, fill needs of everyone that's on the lot. Um, that's another option. And then change lot details. So you can change your lot traits or change lot challenges from here without having to go into build by. You can change the world time. You can delete stuff, delete sims, delete pets, delete unplayed sims. Um, never messed around with that. Delete dead sim relationships. Um, the only thing that I really has ever used this for, these bottom two. So season sheets, you can change the season to whatever you want. You can also change the weather to whatever you want. Random lightning strike, I've never done that, but random lightning strike sim, both of those sound terrifying. Um, and then I guess if you were doing it for some sort of like video or some other reason why you wanted the sim to have um, to be struck by lightning you've got that option there down here there's the sim and the household cheats panel panel this is where i go to summon sims sometimes when i need them to come to a lot and for whatever reason i can't get it to work over here so as long as you know the sim's name you are able to summon the sim to your lot at any time or whatever lot you're on as long as it has a mailbox. You can also list all sims, but you're gonna be waiting a while to get through the full list of the sims that are in your world. Um, I wouldn't recommend, that one takes a really long time, but that's really what I use this for, is to summon sims. Um, I think that's the most used of all of the features from the mailbox that I would be using because you can do all of the other stuff other places okay so i think that is everything that we need to cover what is going on with javi's neck what is he doing okay so much better is scout done with her painting she is she's now playing with the toy what is she playing with um she is playing with is that the thing that's missing from from um, Dylan's room, I think it might be. And for whatever reason, she has decided to get out here on the water and she is having the time of her life right now. So good for her. So on that note, I think we are going to leave this video here. Definitely let me know if this was helpful for you. If there's anything that I missed that you would like me to cover more in depth, definitely let me know that as well. But like I said, this is pretty much everything that I do in MC Command Center. I think it's important to note that a child is in distress and she is just having the time of her life on the water, unbothered. Um, so don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Definitely share the video. Um, all of those things are super helpful for a new channel that's starting out. Maybe she's going to take care of her child now. Um, and yeah, let me know if there's any other mod review videos that you would like to see. So that's it for this one. Like I said, again, thank you all so much for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. And I appreciate everyone's support. So I know I'm still growing and, and kind of working through all of this, but I appreciate everyone who has kind of come on board so far. I appreciate that we are creating this super cool little community here. And I just want y'all to know how much I definitely appreciate it. So again, thank you so much. I'm going to stop rambling now. Bye.